so that we can resolve them over the next month. That way we can turn our attention to the all-important implementation plan, which takes the lofty sentences and such of the foundational st statements down to this text, how we're going to move the library from its current state to where we want it to be over the next five years. So I've put the agenda on the chalkboard to save the paper. Um, as you can see, I would have never survived parochial school because my handwriting is so pathetic. <laughs> I think it can be quite good compared to the men. Uh, <laughs> and I'm really glad the first item is to approve the minutes because um, we did, I didn't have the electronic version of the June meeting. Um, before the last meeting, we weren't able to review that before the meeting, but I sent you both twice sent you all both of the June and the July minutes, so um, didn't hear anything back. Are there any changes? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear anything. Okay. We have two sets of minutes. Yes. Are we, we are. I think we should do one at a time. Yeah. Um, so for the June minutes, I did make one change. I updated the percentages from the survey that were in those minutes with the corrected percentages after I removed those eight duplicates. That's the only change that was in that since you last saw it. Remember those minor changes that we discussed last time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. June. Okay. So that being the case, unless there are other comments on the June minutes? I was just going to make a motion to approve them as amended. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The two minutes are approved. And we move to the July minutes. I'll make a motion to approve those as well. Second. Oh, could we hold it? Yeah. Can we one second? I just, oh, want, oh. I just want to quickly go through the look at it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You have a motion, right? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so um, in keeping with the decision we made at the last minute, uh, meeting, I'll submit these minutes as well as the PowerPoint slides that summarize the um, survey findings so that people can find that online as well. That's still okay. And when you submit them, you send them to Susan? Right. And just because I've never done this before, do you send her a PDF? Is that how it works? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. She likes to do the word. But you can send a PDF. Okay. All right. I mean, I use pages, you know, then she can't read them. So I have to convert it to word. Right. Oh, well, she had asked that she converts a PDF. I think she loves PDF because that's what you post. Yeah. 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 She probably PDFs them after she gets them. <laughs> okay. We can move on. I'm clear on this. So, um, also in keeping with what we agreed last time, um, I thought I would update on any activity that's happened in the meeting. The only activity that's happened, planning activity, since the last meeting was that I met with Kate and we began to work on a draft implementation plan based on the preliminary strategic priorities that we brainstormed at the last meeting. Um, I'm hoping we can get to that. I'm determined that we should get to that in the second hour this morning, um, and we can get your input on Kate's and my uh, 
initial thoughts on how we might begin to handle this plan. But that, that is uh, the only activity. I hope there were any exchanges because I didn't receive any comments on materials that were sent out. So that being the case, um, I'd like to move on again to these um, draft foundation statements, which I think of as sort of the compass rows of the plan. You know, what are um, the priorities and the direction we're moving that will help us make decisions over the next few years? Where do we want to bring the library over the next few years? What are our goals and what are our values that will guide us as we implement our plans? So um, I just want to move through them one by one and not talk too much. Um, Cindy made, I thought, an excellent suggestion for revising the draft mission statement at the last time to use the term community spirit as our way of um, indicating that the library has a role in building community. Uh, we voted on that at the last meeting, and there was agreement with one abstention on that point. And I looked up what community spirit means, and I think it's perfect, <laughs> simple to include. Um, this is what I saw online. Uh, community spirit finds expression in individual or group activities that members engage in for the benefit of the community. And if we're fostering that through the library, I think that's a great way of putting it. Because it's not about the library doing it for. It's about the library bringing together and strengthening the community by bringing us together in common purpose. So I thought, I don't know how that arrived in mind, but I, I, I thought, now there's my editorial. So are there other aspects of the mission, mission statement that give anyone pause, or does there appear to be anything missing? The other change that we made last time was adding literature, because we felt that media wasn't clear to everyone, even though literature technically is a part of media that we ought to say. I would, I would like to move forward with that. Do we have to vote on it? Or? I, I would like to. I okay. just want to get on the record um, in the agreement. And I want to just ask the question. Yeah. Do you think that the readers will understand community spirit as you have since you? Well, may, maybe not. But I think the intuitive meaning that people bring to that term is good enough. We hope. And we can talk about it. And oftentimes, when you put a mission statement out, you can have, like on your new website, which we'll talk about, a secondary clause that says, by community spirit, we mean, look, you don't want your mission statement to be too wordy. And I'm just, right. but I may be wrong, but I feel like the intuitive meaning people bring to that is, is sufficient. And if they looked it up, they'd find more specifically what we have in mind. I'm okay with that. I mean, I'll, I'll put a motion on the table to accept the mission as presented. As presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. such contention over mission statements, and they're not meaningless, because it could be down the road, which we're deciding to do something, and somebody says, is that consistent with the mission or not? Is that mission creep? And we need to have a mission statement mission. that's useful to us in that way. Mission creep is so helpful. It's so helpful when you have it. Yes. It's so helpful. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. Um, the second is just a slight tweak on what we looked at last time based on the input from the last meeting is <coughs> just take a moment and review it. Uh, the first sentence is really the vision statement. The second is, I think, a useful elaboration, which points to the strategic priorities. How did we come up with that year? Oh, well, 
Uh, we didn't come up with that here. <laughs> I have to confess. Oh. I put it in, and I haven't been explicit. Typically, when I run a plan, I think it's useful to envision where you want to be in five years. Implementation plans, they're useless beyond three years. Typically, the first year is pretty good. <laughs> in the second and third year, you really have to revise. No point thinking beyond three years. So, but to have a vision that's shorter than five years doesn't give you much time to make change. So, but that's just discretionary on my part. Feel free to. I think five years is working well. Um, just a second, Fred. The, these are the statements that we're looking at. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Ray Van Ontario. It's further up the road. It's been quiet. <laughs> well, well, please don't make noise. I'll leave that in your hands. <laughs> so, are there any comments? But you know, um, I just wanted to make one comment just to point out something that I added. That last sentence, which is about you know, the challenge that we face having multiple activities in a single small building, that we want to accommodate quiet use, we also want to accommodate programming. But I added the phrase group activity in keeping with the library's mission, um, which I think is a, might be a useful <clears throat> addition instead of just group activity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because we don't want to say, well, the, we as library trustees, well, I'm not but speaking for the library trustees, are responsible for creating space for um, any paper. group activity. Um, it's not our mission. Yeah. That's not our role. Yeah. I hate to be the one to say it, but I, I could move to accept it as written. <laughs> Well, it's not as though this is out of thin air. This is based on a lot of thought that we had. Well, we reviewed them or reviewed them? We did. We did. And I made some tweaks right. based on the discussion. Well, we were largely in agreement in the next two weeks, or that's one. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Okay. So, did you move? I would move to accept it as presented. Second? All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Wow. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, no. Okay, well, we did a lot of the work last We did. I think what we're really going to need discussion is on strategic priorities. So I'm glad we're looking through this. Yeah. I've had to release this like these kinds of planning processes many times, and I wouldn't say that this group isn't highly invested. That's not why we're coming to agreement. I think we've done good work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what can be contentious. So we didn't have to really talk much about values. Um, I circulated these a couple of times. I drafted these based on discussions, based on conversation outside the context of this planning process. But we haven't really looked at them. I think they're important, and I can imagine, for example, a nicely designed poster in the library that says, Our Values. And I found in the past that staff find value statements really affirming. Um, so I, I don't think it's fluff. Um, I think it's important. And my question is, what's missing? Because we haven't really discussed it. And is anything here off the mark? What's a reputational asset? Well, that's really jargony. I don't like it. I'll tell you what I, what I meant. Is that managing the reputation of the library, I believe, within town, how people feel about it, is really important. Mm -hmm. But so I think we could take it out. Creative stewardship. Well, for, well, what I'm saying is right now, right now, but just to just lay it out. But right now, there you know, I'm not on social media, but I hear. So correct me if I'm wrong. There are contentious comments about the library and people are involved in the library. And I think that you know it's really important to ma manage 
the you can only manage that to a certain extent, though, because there's the, the, between the two Facebook groups, I hear more crap about crap that has nothing to do with anything or just absolute bull. So I suggest, because this is problematic, and it's not necessary, it just, I just threw it in. Why don't we take it out and just say financial and material assets? My favorite edit is delete. Just letting you all know. I'm not <laughs> wedded to anything. <laughs> Thinking about what you just said, I, I'm thinking about the newsletter, for example. Um, it's more about communication. Yeah, I'm even you know yes, I'm even wondering. You know, this came out because you know I was thinking so much about how we're going to implement our lofty vision for the library with our very limited assets and staff. And so this sentence came out. But is it really important well, I think to include it. and would would something about communication I think something be much about, more important? I think something about important. communication should be should be somewhere um, because I think that communication has come up a few times in town um, as a problem. And so I think doing stuff like make, using the Facebook page, not group page yeah. to create our events yeah. that can then be shared isn't necessarily managing other people's nonsense about no. what they're putting out there, but it's, it is communicating yeah. what we have available. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's... Well, I think it fits in right next to careful and creative stewardship of the library's communication. I don't know. I think yeah, well, okay, I'd like to break this down into two decisions. Mm -hmm. One is just get back to where we started. This stewardship thing, that's really important to me, but does it belong in a value statement? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I think we should take out reputational assets because A, it's jargon. And B, you know, people say, what are you talking about? And C, as Cindy says, to what degree do we control that? So why call it out? So I think financial and material Assets. I, 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 I like Caitlin's idea of communication and they replace the reputational okay. communication. Communication. What is that? It, it isn't an asset. Right. Maybe. Could it be well, but just and communications. Could we add another bullet point? Well, that's what I was saying. Let's just add it. Separate it out. So what do we want to say? What is our belief about communication? Just, just use everyday language, not. What do we believe about? I think we need to do a better job of communicating events um, in multiple, in multiple even, um, even services. venues. Well, here's, here's how I'm thinking of it just now. You inspire me, but I could be wrong because I haven't had second thoughts yet. I think part of the issue is that communication doesn't reach all Grafton residents. Right. Correct. And so the value that we're saying is communicating to all that Grafton residents in whatever form will reach them is essential to the libraries. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm the mission. When, when we go back to some of our original discussions, we were talking about how there's a lot of things that are available to Grafton residents that aren't necessarily communicated Right. Well, yeah, we get to that and in, so a, in a strategic point. A library, just yeah. as a holder of information, should do a better job of disseminating. Right. I, I feel like part of the problem with communication in the town in general is that the town of Six is just horrible. Mm -hmm. There is no one the central place to go to really that. Yeah. Where you could link up to your to the library Facebook page or the photo or something, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. There's no central place to go for that. It's I really, really want to fix that. I really do. That's not on this committee whatsoever. But and you, that's what you have a website. There's a library website. Yeah. It, which is also it's not, just it's stagnant. It's, 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 it's pretty pretty not. Get that in over a year. And pause. We're getting to that. Okay. <laughs> we absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I think that um, you know, I, I go back to that original meeting where. You told me about the senior services, in, right? And I was actually able to tell my aunt who was able to get a ride for my uncle. <laughs> you know, like, and that's a really helpful thing. 
Exactly. exactly. And so, like, we don't necessarily have to be the ones to provide the service. No. But the service is to communicate that information. And it's not necessarily... So, you know, it's not about something as simple as maybe it needs a modifier, maybe it doesn't. Communication with the Grafton community is, is central to our mission. You know, something. Because we're talking about what we believe. We, what, what we're saying around this table here is communication is really important. It is really important. And it I think really is a library's mission, which libraries are about information. Right. Um, right. But to call it out, and if you have an value statement, it calls it out. Like, right. We got to pay attention to this. These are our values. How do we do this? <laughs> well, I think it's also something that should be evaluated in like, the trustees' meetings. You should be able to look at these and go, well, how are we doing that communication? What did we do this month? Right? Uh, we'll get, we, we, try to get to that. We'll, we, we will get to that. Yeah. We will get to that in a second hour. Can anyone um, suggest how we should phrase this? And if not, I'll have a suggestion. Not how to phrase it, but how to get this. So, well, I guess it's just kind of a question. I mean, would, would calling it careful and creative stewardship of the library's communications, finances, material? Um, not be sufficient. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't really think it's a separate. I don't think it's a it's a question of stewardship. It's not. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, yeah, I think it's, sort of, sort of, it's sort of yeah. that yeah. stewardship is a piece of it. It's <coughs> also the dissemination. So that so that we be careful and creative. That we yeah. be with care and also creative of how we communicate. <coughs> Well then, well, let's try this careful and creative stewardship of the library's finances, material assets, and communications, which are, are essential. essential to are essential to the library's success. Mm -hmm. Hold oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Would we like to? on this section and see a revision between meetings, not making a decision, but considering uh, the new writing, are we ready to approve something today? Uh, Susan, could you clarify what we were asking? Well, what I'm asking is what we have come to is that something about communications is important in the value statement. Right. Because it is, we believe something strongly about the central role of communications and all these essays. So, one thought was make a separate bullet about it. The other thought was fold it in in substituting um, reputational assets, substituting it in there such that the phrase becomes careful and creative stewardship of the library's finances, material assets, and communications are essential to its success and sustainability. Gretchen. Um, I think communication is so important that it really should just be a bullet completely in its own. I think it's such a the key aspect of the library reaching out to people and I think by including that, you know, in that paragraph, in that sentence, it just buries it. Uh-huh. Great. Also, and uh, about communication, is there is there some way we can say that we welcome I mean, not only do we put out information about what's going on, but we welcome input of not just groups, but individuals of what they would like to, well, we did have a survey, but um, I don't know, something about community input, welcoming. Well, I think that would be part of your job as a trustee to solicit information mm -hmm. after you have that value statement. So you have the value statement, and then you, you part of the implementation is so let's solicit people, right? So I have a suggestion. Go ahead. Uh, I would like us to cogitate over this between okay. meetings and uh... That is my suggestion. <laughs> so my thought is, how about this? I want to get as much nailed down as we can. What if we voted on um, the values statement to be as written, 
um, with the exclusion of reputational assets. We're full of and, and, okay. and agree that we will add a bullet point about communications. My suggestion is that I send out two or three alternatives to the group okay. and other people come back and forth and we bring something to the next meeting just on that bullet point. But if we've approved the other bullet points, we, move on. we can move on. And it's just about a communications bullet point. Mm -hmm. How do you move that? So we're only communicating ideas. At the next meeting, we adopt it. Right. Yes. No decision. No decision. No decision. No. No. We'll just. So I we just. But well, we can't be right here at the next meeting. We. We have. Our thinking has to. Yeah, yeah. Has moved toward consensus right. between meetings. Right. I have a yeah. So I don't update it in the minutes. Because you're going to send out. Yes. <laughs> just in I did, and I. <laughs> I, and I only have one thought that I to say it off of my mind. When we think of reputational assets, uh, I, I think about a simple side. We, we can't control what other people do, but we can control what we do. So we could work at our own way of dealing with each other and other people. Not that it could certainly happen here, but I think that that thought we need to deal with. So you're not mm. you're not comfortable yet with, with just excising that. Oh no, I am because I think it's kind of fun here. Yeah. Like, I'm just commenting that it that is that important. It's very important, and we can't control what happens because the nastiness is going to really, really like it. But we can control what we put out. But we can control and what we do and how we do it. Is that not the same as a communications plan? <laughs> I don't know, to me it's almost like ethics. Yeah. Kind of an ethical position where you're. That's a value? It is a value. Well, then let's think All about right. that. Well, I don't it's know if it's hard level. enough to call it out here. But it's something I think we will not lose. Even if it's only as we talk to each other or we talk to the staff. And yeah. I mean, I think that the. We don't do. The library groups over there. Um, don't do a good job right now of um, effective communication that helps manage some of that stuff. I completely agree. I mean, yeah. Basically, what I've learned is listening. Mm -hmm. Very little listening what's going on. Well, I, I found as I listen more, I learned a lot. Oh. When I was appointed or whatever I was to be a trustee and treasurer, I said to myself, I'm going to make myself, I do fantasize a lot, a little plaque. I'm going to put it, and it's going to say, listen. Listen. <laughs> because it is very important. Okay, so are we, are you asking for a motion to approve everything except for bullet point three? With the no, no. Wait a minute, are we going to adopt the four that exists with striking that one? Right. Yes, exactly. Oh. Yes. So let's just move that. I see. And then I don't think the next thing needs to be moved. No. We'll just we'll just get to it at the next meeting. I see. So all we're we're looking at doing is striking striking reputation and working as on adding a communication. Bullet. Exactly. And the communication bills you're right giving now. we're giving ourselves <laughs> We're giving ourselves quite a big challenge to somehow wrap in a single clause everything we're talking about, about communications, but it is important. Kate had something on the tip of the tongue. I don't know, I just came to the mind of fostering ethical and accurate communications regarding the library. <laughs> so, and, and so, do we, something about, I mean, this is like a, the buzzword of the decade or whatever, but transparency. I mean, we, we, that we don't do anything sneaky with money or anything, or is that, or does that just go? I think that comes with your job. Okay. So it is worth working with, in my mind. 
Is it important enough to handle this call out? So can someone move that we approve the value statement as written here with um, the removal of reputational assets? And then we can make a second motion to, uh, to um, add. I'll move that we accept the board as presented with the exception of the one that was uh, the commission, reputational assets. Let me just clarify my own mind. So the uh, third bullet, you take it out? No. Reputation? No, mm -hmm. yeah, just the three. No, Yes, no, he's right. I'm just saying, we the reputation. And the rest is fine. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Okay, and then. There'll be another one I have later based upon what the... The discussion here. I will send out alternatives and okay. people have other ideas and we'll have an exchange, but then we won't make any decision until the next one. So, is there a second to that? So, if we're not making a decision until the next meeting, why do we have a motion on the table? Because we can do, we can do all the one. Oh, we're doing, well, we're doing all of the, the ones that are here, and then next time we're adding them. Oh, just, just do the whole thing next next meeting. Just why? That's what I thought I had asked earlier, but oh. it wasn't heard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't listening. <laughs> but we feel like we are progressing more if we um, get these. We already not commission and vision right off the table. We're good. We're good. We barely discussed values last time, really. But I think this discussion has been useful. Oh, absolutely. It's out of the absolutely. That communication yeah. needs to be a priority and a value because it's so important. Mm -hmm. So where are we? What's, what's the pleasure? I don't know. I will. Is there, if there's no second, then it dies. Um, I mean, I can second it because I, I don't care one way or another. I was just looking for direction. So. And so that's to accept the four bullet points without the reputational no asset. Yeah. Is there an advantage to that? That is the motion. That was the motion. Is there an advantage to the Just the only one. Well, we can just have a we could just have a, a general person's agreement that we approved these four as, and, and yeah. just add it the last one we can all at once at the next meeting. I think that's what Cindy and Gary, and I have no objection to that. Thank you. Okay, okay so, so we just so leave it at that. It's simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, so I'm gonna say we, just don't go back on it. <laughs> so I'm just going to say we have finalized the, this, these value statements and are adding communications one next to, time. And if the complete value statement will be Both approved at, at the next okay. meeting. Clear. Good. Good. So now we're getting to the part where we just um, brainstormed what these should be, the strategic priorities, our primary strategies for pursuing mission and vision at the last meeting. And I did a little wordsmithing after the meeting and sent out what was my sense of uh, the role to group around these priorities in the minutes. And make clear in the minutes if you'll notice that, that these statements are evolving, so nobody should take them as having been voted. So I'll just sit back and await your input and feedback on these statements. Just, just one more point, which I'll reiterate I've said before. Um, as you'll see when we look at the draft implementation plan, we use the strategic priorities as a scaffold. Like what will we do to operationalize this priority? What are the objectives that are measurable? What are the tasks? So it's useful to get this right if we can, or as close to right as we can. Nothing's perfect. Well, let me ask you this. You know, we know what this process I don't think any of this is like tablets coming off the mountain, right? All of this is not the vision, the view, it is. It is, but I would say that we want to do our best to create a compass rose, get back to my metaphor, that's in doing. Huh. And we could decide a year down the road, boy, did we get that wrong? And you know, we're human beings and we can do that. But let's let's hope we 
can get our direction set in a way that's relatively enduring. I, you know, I, I'm not objecting yeah, to that. I'm yeah. just trying to point out that you're not stuck with the Ten Commandments, right? No, it's a human creation, and humans can change it. <laughs> well, these are the things that just kept coming up. And um, the proof is in the implementation. Yeah, none of these are surprising to me, so. And I just want to call out five because, you know, that's in some ways the elephant in the room. Yeah, um, and you'll see when we get to the very draft implementation plan how Kate and I are suggesting we pursue this and get the conversation on the right track again. We're not going to resolve this as part of the planning process. We're going to address it in the months to come. Anything missing? Anything extraneous? Nothing. So, um, going back to the communications one because it's been on my brain mm -hmm. recently. Um, is it appropriate to put in examples or is that beyond the scope of? Well, it's beyond the scope of these statements. Okay. The examples are in the implementation. Okay. So when you see the Gantt chart that I, that we created and started, you'll say, well, oh, well what does that mean? Okay. What are you going to do? Okay. When? What, how are you going to measure you succeeded? Okay. That's all um, Thank you. Do um, so we need, this is part of the library's uh, Anyway, fostering, sorry, I'm not a speaker. Um, part of what we want to do is communicate information that has nothing to do with the library, but use services, but is about services that people may find useful. Mm -hmm. um, maybe especially elderly, but anyone. To be kind of a well, sort yes. of. So is that? Yes, is no, no, that's absolutely. Um, so not just like about the library, but a more holistic something about. I mean, we're in for, it's an information So what if we, and, and that is addressed in the implementation plan, but it's not articulated in this statement, and you're absolutely right about the, calling out the absence. What if we put library and town? How about community? Or, yeah, community would be good too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so what are you, what are we at? So on number one, improving communications with Grafton residents and town entities in order to increase awareness of library and community resources and activities. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's better. I do have to say though that taking on that piece kind of, I don't know, it's a small town so I worry about things being communicated on other Yes, there are the devils in the details. <laughs> this is just a broad statement. Yeah. How, we, how we work that out in the implementation where we say exactly what we plan to do yeah. and what we're not planning to do. Right. And I thought about that a lot. You know, when we were <laughs> working on it, I think it's important to um, to address the detail yeah. where the devil is. This is it. So I have a suggestion. What if we not <coughs> formally uh, approve these, but table them until we look at the implementation plan? We speak back and forth, and maybe in looking sure. at the implementation plan, we see, oh, we really ought to tweak that priority, or something's missing. Like when you see all the stuff we're planning to do, you, you might say, where's law? And it might be that the construct of using these priorities somehow excluded it, which means we have to go back to that. So um, this doesn't need to be a, a vote. Are people comfortable with taking approval of these? And so I'm look at the yeah. Okay. Um, so the next one is really tough. 
um, typically you'll see this is a really broad statement. That's because I got into trouble on intended impact when I tried to make it more specific. It's, it's, it's really a challenge. However, the point of having an intended impact statement is unlike the mission statement, it needs to have some degree of measurability baked in. Some degree, if we're talking about reaching more graphical residents, what are we talking about? How many are we directly reaching now? And how much, and, and when we talk about impact, there's so many different ways the library impacts people's lives. To pick out one or another was challenging to me. So I had trouble with this, but just laid this out for you all to look at. I think we should have a discussion So the, and the intended impact should really map that to the strategic priorities, right? Um, no, the strategic priorities are the way that you're planning to have an impact. Right, but you should be it's able more, to measure. Yes, 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 it, yes, I see what you're saying. Something yeah. for each of these. Well, you'll see the this sound. is what I'm good at. Yes, I'm yeah. good at this piece. <laughs> oh, I've done it as well. Um, it's tricky, and you want to be careful because you don't want to lay it. You're going to measure this or that, and you don't have the time or the resources mm -hmm. to do it. So you need to be careful. So what what are we able to do? Uh, the proposition that I'm making is if we substantially increase utilization, do people utilize something that isn't of value to no. their lives? So it seems like, in some ways, a tautology. If our utilization goes way up, we're obviously providing things that are of value. Exactly. But I think that you should be able to measure things like improving your communication, number of events that are posted, and result in like so we should be tracking yes and i think like where people find out about right stuff but that those those are sort of those feed into the impact we want to have better communications so people utilize these services and programs and get the value of them. but if you can't measure sorry, no, this is where I get. No, 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 so, so but if you can't show that you're improving, increasing your contact with people. And okay. you, need to, you, you need to be able to measure how people are getting their information to come to our meetings, come to our the hours. And so it's important to know, like we did, X number of events that we posted on social media. Right. To find out where they find out their Can I just, yeah. Yes, I just want to suggest that those are process indicators. Now I'm getting jargony. Those no, are process yeah, indicators. Not, they're not impact. Right. But they do help you. They, yes, they do. They're, that's why they're process indicators. Okay. And you need to track them. You're absolutely right. right. So where did you hear about us? Did yes. you spend our advertising dollars? Like well, well enough. Exactly. Those are process indicators, but the, the end impact is we're going to improve lives with what we do. And how do we know that? We're not, we're not going to do intensive so surveying, and it certainly wouldn't be scientifically. Um, so it wouldn't, more, wouldn't meet the standard of research. So I'm saying so it's more it's more mapping back to the vision. Yes. Okay. The vision and the mission. Right. Well, I need to know. Yeah. I wasn't arguing with you. I was no, no, no. But, yeah, I mean, it'll have to be sort of plug and play sort of thing. Well, there are all kinds of ways we can do that that are not time intensive. And I think, you know, whenever we have an event, without making people sit down and fill out a long thing, there are all kinds of creative ways you can get feedback as yeah. to, did you enjoy it? Did you learn anything? Which <laughs> just really yeah. simple stuff. Is this having the impact that we want so that we can, we can inform the planning? 
like Mary have had the the full galoda. We have to have yeah. those. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're um, New Hampshire Humanities requires them. So, so let me, you know, so let me get back to this question. We want to put a stake in the sand. As to how many, you know, to use the jar, how many lives do we want to touch in any way? I mean, I look at your data every month at the trustees meeting, mm -hmm. and what the library's doing is important to that small number of people. But I think we definitely want to increase that pool of people. And George always makes the point, you don't think people even know, for example, about free downloadable books. I know that. Free downloadable books, mm -hmm. which I use every week. I'm blown away by it. So my question is, do we want to put a stake in the sand as to what is a reasonable goal? If we don't need it, that's data to consider. But do we have? I don't like how squishy it is. Says many more than we've served now. <laughs> how many more? Mm -hmm. so I would order a percentage increase. Yeah, yeah, I would too. But I was not yeah. willing to to suggest what that ought to be without talking to you. How about majority? That's a lot. That would be. Are we going to within no. the course of a year's no. operations reach 500 people? I don't think. I don't know. Where are the census? Well, Remember, we just got 13, 13 yeah. Yes. Yeah. About 200 and change are children, I think. Yeah. No. 1386? I think that was what the number was. I think it oh. was too, like, the 200. Yeah, the 2020 census. 230 or so. Oh, we only increased about 50 people in 10 years. <clears throat> well, my little sample is. Oh, we jumped in 2021. Oh. Uh, Whoever we had, like, <laughs> many people in it. We now have fewer people on the checklist to vote than when I started 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we have an influx of people, we have just about as many leave. Yeah. So the net increase is very small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought the 50 was probably about right, really. If you think so, about, I think that's yeah. the meeting generous. How many library cards do we have? How many people have? I don't know, actually. But we, so it looks like we average about 120 visits. From how many different people? Yeah, that's always a well, lot of the time. Right? So, yeah. Out of 1,300. No, she means 120 visits, but but maybe four of those visits are one person. Oh, right. right. So, oh, yeah. 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 so yeah. unduplicated people. Yeah. 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 Right. Four different times during the week, and one person comes every week. That's 16 of 120. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I'd have to explore some, some way of tracking that call of maintaining, making privacy there, and whatnot. I mean, it, you could probably do it by just car number. Yeah. If you got, you know, just remove all the names and just do it by car number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But are we ever going to move that? Are people ever removed from that list when they leave town? No, no but I'm going to do it as a. Um, like if they took something. Oh, if they took something. Right. Or used overdrive. Right. Mm -hmm. You could. But I don't know what's reasonable. Um, can I interrupt you there? Are you in attendant impacts? Yes. And so the first bullet says 100% increase. Right, circulation. So that was our first. That was our first. Did you have the page that I gave you today? <laughs> You're not, yeah. She 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 Many more people than we're serving, but I just don't know what that percentage is. Well, I mean, I was thinking like five percent a year. Oh, five percent increase per year. Five years. So for your five years, you're at twenty-five percent increase. Well, we don't really have a sense of a complete control over what those numbers are, right? Because no. they we are because they're dependent on the needs and the reactions and the participation of the town. Absolutely. So as a whole, we really have 
no control over whether it's 10, whether it's 20, whether it's 100, or whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure how you say it, but why wouldn't you uh, try to come up with something that says uh, it'll basically on a positive, it's my engineering argument, positive feedback loop about how you see things evolving as uh, people get involved. If you see a positive rate of uh, involvement, then you may want to try and increase that and then go from there. If not, if you don't see any kind of feedback, then you can't go anywhere. Maybe it will be limited to 2% or 5% or 10% to try and Oh, I think up to a goal. Right. It's kind of counterproductive. You have to try, try something, see where it goes, and then. Well, I think that gets to the process. No, you know, but I think, well, I think Gary's coming at it from a, a different angle that's useful. One angle is, you know, you set a goal and, and, and you try to be inspirational with it and you try to reach it, but, but the points you make are really good. Maybe the goal is to organize our activity and our approach such that we see a steady increase a steady increase or a year by year increase. We haven't seen that. Right. No, it's pretty flat. So, you know, that I, I, I'm going a little further than what you suggested, but it's a different way and I, I think it has merit. So mm -hmm. but what I'm trying to say is intended impact should have something that's measurable in it. It shouldn't just be squishy. Mm -hmm. And steady increase is measurable. Like if we do all this work, I can't imagine. We do all this work and next year the numbers are the same as this year. We have a look at that. What can Yeah, something doesn't work. Yeah. Or we just feel that people don't have that desire. Mm -hmm. that that need. Exactly. exactly, and that's the information we should know. And the town ought to know that mm -hmm. before I invest more and money in the library. Correct? Right. Right. So I'm, I, I think He's got a good that's point. a very good point. So how would Write we... Write it down. That's what I'm saying. I know how you say it, but that's what you'd want to try to get at. Yeah, I think it's a very good point. Well, because I think a library's work in general is to always stay aware of the community's needs and relevant to them. So, yeah, if we didn't, if we didn't see that sort of natural increase. Well, this is, and the, the other squishy thing in this, which I don't think we can resolve, is, is the word positive impact. Of course, you don't want a negative impact. So why do you say that? But since the impacts are so varied by individual, it seems very hard for, to me to articulate what the impacts ought to be in the statement. But if we said within five years, the Grafton Public Library will have a positive impact on the lives of many more residents than it serves in 2021, with a measurable year-by-year -year increase in numbers served. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about here is so we have, a, we have a program and we try to increase the program. If there's no increase, if we've proven that the market's saturated and no more than you have. So stop pushing it and find something else. Try a new program. Yeah. Or it wasn't communicated well. But that's also the assessing how it's probably going to be. Then if we've done a job and we try to continue. Or like, so for example, you got a program and three people are coming and they like it. And you say, how come more people aren't coming? Is it because the program's wrong? Is it because we communicated it wrong? Is it because we executed it poorly? And you try to figure that out. But if you did good communication and you're doing it right, that just really isn't the interest that we thought. Interest, yeah. Which is possible. Well, this is kind of off the whatever, but um, I think we need, I think the country needs a four day work week and then people can pursue more than, I mean, we can't change that, but then they would have more time and energy to pursue other things. The library's not going to change that. No. <laughs> yeah. Look at the long end. But don't you think it would people participate more if they had more time and energy? They well. Well, and I think that kind of goes with what I'm sure we're going to talk about at some point. 
the ladder's only open, what, 12 hours a week? Yeah, what can you do? Yeah. I mean, we were talking about it. This doesn't necessarily fit into a lot well, of schedules. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. And two, if we have a population of like roughly 1,300 people here, how many, how many people do we need to see participating in the program to, to label it successful? Well, I think it's a matter of, of balancing um, cost and impact. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you were paying a staff person to staff a program and only two people were coming a month, right. that's, that's, that's so awesome. staff out. That gets right. back to our values. That's yeah. not good stewardship. Right. That's true. Yeah. So, but I think Gary's point is good, and it's, and I think all things considered, um, Yes, we want to have a positive impact, and we want to serve more people than we do. If we don't want to serve more people than we're serving now, what's the point even of this exercise? I think we do. But instead of saying a percent increase to say, we expect to see a measurable year-by-year -year increase. Mm -hmm. And I can rewrite that to, to that effect, and then we could say impact will be tracked via several indicators and tools, including utilization data, Post participation surveys. I don't know if I want to promise that we'll do more at this point. Mm -hmm. Gretchen. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of caught up in the worry. Um, first of all, second, circulation and service utilization data. What do you mean by that? Service utilization? Things like um, accessing the intranet. Printer. Uh, printer. Any service that the library In the library. But it's mm -hmm. a, it, it's, for a lay person, it's a, that doesn't really say that. Uh, it can be, it can be said to zero. <laughs> to charge one. Yeah. Uh, when I read that, I read your, basically, your activity in the park we get every month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So what else could we call it that would find that and be, make sense to somebody who doesn't know? Well, what if we just don't? spell it out, just say utilization, yeah. period, and don't get into trouble. Does that work? Delete, delete, go to the table. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. It's so Okay. And I've already, we've already answered what goals we want to set. What we want to do is make our effort, track what we're doing, and make decisions as we go, but we expect to see an increase in utilization, which implies an increase in impact. So people aren't going to come if it's of no value. Right. Okay. All right. And then I just threw down, this is just my own compulsive editorializing. Other goals, I don't know if you want to write into the plan, but I was talking to myself. I, I really want to see the library as, as a source of pride in the town. Wellspring of Unity, this gets to the, the social media stuff that I don't follow. We don't have control, but it's just, I'm just expressing my own feelings. And also, wouldn't it be great if our little library were a model for others who are struggling with the same things? And I don't think we'll put this in a plan, I'm just expressing myself. So. Yeah, I'll okay. What's wrong with it? Well, I'll just stop Why? talking. Why? Do you like those goals? I like it. Better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so I'll so try that, to leave those in. Are these things that we didn't have to measure? No, I'm not proposing them as something. I'm proposing them as context. Oh. Fluff, but it means something to you. Mm -hmm. you know, we hope, as a byproduct of what we do, that these things will occur. Um, how it? I told you, that was just uh, my taking advantage of the, the power of running the media. <laughs> but people like the concept, so I'll see what I can do with them. Um, this is a little sideline. My idea, I don't think our plan should be this long narrative document. I'm thinking a set of PowerPoint slides. Mm -hmm. A small set. A small set of PowerPoint slides. Pithy like poetry. Well, <laughs> I'm going to be your timekeeper. It's a yes. Level. Yes. So we need to move on. In terms of intended impact, um, 
you know, I suggested some rewriting, and Gretchen helpfully suggested some deletion. Um, do we want me to write this up and circulate it and kind of move into the next meeting because there are multiple other changes? Yes. I think that's easier. Okay. Huh. All right. So, this is so before we move to implementation plan, everything I'm reading is saying that people need to move to think. So let's all stand up. But I'm not kidding. People need to move. And that's what's wrong with the schools. Kids don't get to move enough. So you can just put your hands up. Grab your left wrist. pursuing our mission and vision. But then, these aren't both yet all match the standards being smart objectives, which means specific, measurable, uh, achievable, relevant, and time -bound. So if a great objective meets those criteria, they don't all be yet, but I'm looking forward to it. OK, so this is what, and this gets back to your uh, process indicators. What are we going to track? on these objectives mm -hmm. to see if we're achieving what we're doing. And what are the tasks that are involved in achieving this objective? Who's primarily responsible? There are too many directors here. Let's remember she has two hours beyond staffing the desk every week to, to do all this, uh, which is, yeah. So we need to, that's why volunteers are going to be so essential and trusting. And then I've laid it out here in terms of when things should happen, um, this definitely needs work. But it gives you a sense of what we have. And my idea is, once we get this together, this is the thing that's going to change the most. But there'll be a standing item on the trustees' agenda every month for our strategic plan update. You know, like, where, where are we on this chart? And then you might say, what the were we thinking? We can't do this. In which case, there's a deliberate decision to move out or to take, you know, time wise or to take it out. Whatever. And this is malleable, but without this, you get, you know, to the meeting, you say, what did we do towards the strategic plan goals? I don't know. What did we do? Because it's, it's concrete. So that's the point. 
So the first one is about communications, and that was really important. And what Kate and I were thinking, um, and this is awareness of library resources, and this is just about the library. Oops. Oh, shit. <laughs> what happened? Does the time matter? Okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, and I just threw this 100% increase in aggregate utilization by 2024 or 2025. We can pick the date. I actually would like to, to set a goal and see if we can meet it, knowing that what Gary's stating is absolutely true. Not getting this number in the foundation statements, but something to say we're so aiming yeah, for. So in the last yeah, something we're aiming for. And they're saying, you know, that was unrealistic, but I like to be inspired by people. So the first is uh, thought we had was we had this frame on the library field. This is Grafton Library that Vogel puts its events on. That's just wasted advertising space. What if we had a really nice sign board painted that had, you know, welcome something about Grafton Library around the corner, it's open hours, it's URL for its website, and then like on real estate signs, books at the bottom, if there's an event, it says book club tonight or book club this Thursday at seven or whatever, where people drive by because you know we don't have visibility. So that, that to me, a good sign is worth a lot. Mm -hmm. So that was one thought That's for community thought. communications. And if people aren't online at all, they come to the town office for any, any reason, they're going to see. Always, it'll bring the library uh, its visibility up. The second is to collaborate with Vogel to produce a semi-annual semi library newsletter that's sent to every household that informs people about services, upcoming events, anything like that. I mean, Vogel's done some in the past, and the library wants to do it. It's a perfect partnership. Mm -hmm. And then Vogel would pay for it. Mm -hmm. Even better. Which, mm -hmm. which would be great. So what I'm seeing in this plan is just a really tight partnership between Vogel and the trustees to implement this plan. Okay, the third one. And these are simple, but bi-monthly update to the library listserv, putting an expectation on regular, repeated communication, I think is important. Here, build a new website. The website we've got is just, uh, it, it's not of any use, and Kate has all kinds of ideas. It seems like you're motivated to, to do this, yeah. this one. Um, it'd be very useful. Has anybody gone to Kanan's site? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a lot. Their newsletter is really good too. Yeah, so that's a good model. I just want to suggest before you go too deep into that, um, we're we're looking at a new vendor for a website for the town that does immensely better. And one of the things that they offer is each department basically has their own web page within our, our web page. So they have like a slash library slash. So, exactly. Right. Or so, the town, the 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 so. so yes, so it would not be yeah, the velocity all the pictures at the top. Well, a carousel. It will literally. <laughs> if I get my way, it will be much different than what we've got going on. But, but that is that is one of the one of the benefits of that. Each, each department will have its own basic web page within our website, and you can post any communication on there you want. You don't have to call Sue and ask her to post something for you. You as the department has to do the mobile site. So be, just, yeah, it's got to be awesome. <laughs> um, I mean, that's one of the things that they do. It is, yeah, and they, they make sure that all the websites follow um, ADA standards. So, great. Would we have the ability to control our own format of that page? Or is it kind of a plug in place where like, this is what you get? Um, how, how, how it would depend. I, I think, no, I, I, think there's, I think there's some changes you can make, but I think to make it look like something completely different right. would okay. add, 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 add to the cost. So a follow up question would be. Um, is there a way for Caitlin to say at events? Absolutely. I say you know what I mean? So that it's not like hey, so can you Absolutely. You, you would have you would have basically like your own little blog area. You could, okay. you could post whatever information you wanted there. You could post your newsletter there as well. Definitely. And you would each department would have a calendar where you oh, whatever you want. 
and that will be on your your department page itself, and that will also feed to the town calendar. Oh, good. Good. That's good. So the question I've got goes something like this: You talk about events. My concern would be the events are publicized down in a tree of websites all the way down in the libraries. So will this have an upfront as soon as you hit graphing? This is what's happening now. Instead of seeing five pictures of graphing on the <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You will see. You will see. You will see. Like, um, I have the school district has, I think, he and I have more that he's got, like, on a, a sidebar, like, current events. Right? Okay. Uh, well, right at the very beginning, right? Yes. So you don't have to go looking. Exactly. So I, I like that. So how far do you write this building <laughs> website? So this doesn't mean we won't find additional communication. Sure. And I don't know if we want to put every last detail. For example, I don't know if it happens, but I think whenever we have an event, there should be a poster in the post office. Yes. You know. So, huh? And at the And at, yes, and yes. You know, yeah. So you miss us one at a time. It's such a geographically challenging town for me because it is. It is. It is. 4A and then like on this side of town, I never go over to 4A because I'm over here. So yeah. if I'm going to Denver, I go that way. If I'm going to Kane, I go that way. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. I think you should put C City Public. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but uh, because of good for you, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, we'll see. I said it. Eight thousand up front. Eight thousand up front to get it some work done. I'm pretty sure we can make our pay for that. Okay. Oh, so, oh, okay. Yeah. So you see how this works, and then. We don't have time to decide exactly what the timing should be, but if we can just run through this and, and get some great ideas percolating to add into, then I'll go back with Kate um, and, and think about timing, um, which and what might be practical. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to think more about who's going to be the lead on each of these things. So let's let's keep that in mind as we keep going. I, I would argue that um, some of the collaboration with the in-town groups doesn't necessarily need to be Kate. I think it could be a volunteer. Right. I really appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Right. No, I don't think it necessarily no. do you. No. I mean, I don't want to take it off your plate. No. But, but I think it, yeah. if we're just talking about like, getting right. information. Yeah. And then handing you what, whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I put myself, and, and I don't know if we're going to do this, but this is the, the issue that you brought up earlier. We want the library to be a source of communication and information about resources like what you found out about the, the senior center. Um, like, how do we put a hedge around that <laughs> so it isn't anything and everything? What's reasonable? And these are just things that I came up with as possibilities. For example, I know LBS, and I think Bonnie's taking the lead on this, has this little two-page brochure that lists um, town services and, and some town groups. Um, it costs to distribute that and they, they're not, uh, they don't have a lot of resources. And it overlaps, to get back to what um, Gary was saying at the first meeting, that collaboration with existing entities that have, you know, this is part of the mission, is gonna be really important. But maybe the library, because we now think this is part of our mission, could collaborate with LBS, perhaps find the, provide the funding for the distribution, distribute and uh, sort of improve on what they've already done, but give them credit and visibility. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one. And since I've joined the LBS, no, well, I'll, I'll ask LBS if you would be interested in such a collaboration. So that was one thought. Um, and also distributing at the library and on the website you know, everybody we can. Um, do we? Distribute warrant articles at the library. 
We do. We do. We, do. we already have, yes. So that was another so one. That actually available. You know, what's low hanging fruit that we can that we can support? Is there anything else around town issues? We're not oh, okay. see that thing that we could improve. I think with an improved town website that takes care of a lot of the stuff that I was thinking of, it like when are all the different community meetings? Because when I moved here, it was impossible to figure out. Oh, absolutely. It was really hard to figure out when stuff was. And if it, that ended up on the yeah. calendar. Right, and also that, it's um, better on, on a website because it can be kept up to date more easily right. than a printout. Because I noticed in the LBS, this lovely little two page thing, there were some meeting times mentioned that I know were no longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think that they actually yeah. The library staff would just be able to tell new people, oh, here's where you can go find the most up to date information. So it takes right. us out of the right. distribution. Right. We're just kind of redirecting people. Yeah. Well, for that matter, how would a lot of the uh, items under that whole area fall in that process? Especially if you don't have a big uh, town. Do so. you see it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I read these more as. Um, like when there are overlapping responsibilities, like we would be responsible for working with the select board and working with the welfare liaison, not necessarily like figuring out when they need. Yeah. So uh, the recommendation is an easier one. Let's stop at that. So um, if we had a, let's just say a camp. <laughs> Um, we might go to the rec committee and say, hey, we'd like to run a camp with you. Would you be responsible for the, you know, physical activity on the field? And then we'll do, you know, some arts and crafts and some book, you know, literature time and blah, blah, blah. And so that would be a collaboration between us and that's our responsibility. What would I see there is collaborate with innovation, which, which kind of applies to all of us, right? Collaborating with the uh, town welfare plan information, collaborating with the people who want to provide information. Mm -hmm. If the town website is already there. Well, I guess uh, my guess is you can tell me if, you're, if I'm wrong, but like one of the things people come to the library for is to get a hard a physical copy yeah. of the word yeah. article. Okay. So okay. it's Absolutely. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think um, and also like the people who don't have access at that home might want to come to us for if we think that communications of this sort are within the mission yeah. of the library yeah. and it's certainly one of our values then the question is how do we work with other town entities to support their communications right right and i think it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're the ones doing the communication no we're just saying that is we're just we want to improve communication like just let we're having to the trustees and say, hey, we'd like you to highlight this thing that's coming up for us. Do we have any uh, computer in the library, right? Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah, computers. No, computers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, so people could come sit. It may just be as simple as say, <laughs> you, know, you want to see all this stuff on uh, the uh, town website, you can go and Yep. That's it. Make the town website be the home page on the browser. That's really important. Yeah. Well, this is this is. It's all going to be there on the computer. Are we going to talk about those new beer plates too, or is that for another day? Okay. It's a place for lunch. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't want to stop on this because there's so much more I want to get to, but I but I get the drift of where this is moving and how I might alter this accordingly. But the point is, everybody's trying to communicate well. We consider it part of our mission. How do we work with what exists to make sure more people are getting more timely, accurate information and complete? Mm -hmm. Like you didn't know about the. Mm -hmm. The Canyon stuff, which, mm -hmm. which, okay, all right. I mean, we should also highlight something with the schools too, because they're offering like free breakfast and lunches for kids. I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll do that. I remember they did it during the pandemic, but I didn't realize. I'm just writing notes to myself here. Uh, <coughs> programming. 
that reflects interests and is consistent with the mission. So these are, this is just a, a, a beginning stab. My thought was, if we had at least three ongoing groups per month by the end of 2023, that's a reasonable goal. Um, what should they be? There's different ways. You can just pilot and test and see if the people come and move on to another idea that's not a good one. You can do a survey, I'm not so sanguine about whether that would be useful or not. The ones, the ideas that I've heard come up just in my travels in town and, and are succeeding at other libraries as a garden club, um, <coughs> excuse me, a textile arts club, pardon me. They say they won't come. Huh? They say that they want to garden, but they don't participate. Well, it, de it depends. You and me, <coughs> start a garden club. And our mission will be to get a garden in front of the library and then move on to the next family. And I'll call on my friends and say, we have this garden club that's doing visible things to the town. And I'll bring them. <laughs> so I want that club. And that's why it's a good one on the list. Because I'll take it after now. <laughs> right? I don't be like to have a textile arts gathering, mm -hmm. which is really just with getting together to talk with whatever you're working on at the time. Those generally go over there. <laughs> well, I'll have to recall. Easy to record it. Rick is retiring on Wednesday next yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's going to have to stay involved to get his successor up and running. But his thought is, you know, as he settles, he can start in a strong club in town. And I think we could, we could get that going. Um, so that's the three that I, and those might not be the three, but that's what I put in the plan. A garden, astronomy, and textile arts, okay. you know, knitting, sewing, yeah. macrame, whatever people are doing. Basically, it's a gap session with your hands on the That's fine. Right. 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 Yes, and, but we want to, yeah. we've got seven regulars now. I think we can easily increase that to 10. Okay. So my goal, this is a smart objective. Three clubs per month by the end of 2023, average combined attendance of 30 to 35. Mm -hmm. okay. I just That's a smart objective. Talk to you about it later. <laughs> so yeah. maybe we can see more. more. No. <laughs> no. 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 Wow. Wow. Can we get to traditional library function, you know, that we should acquire books and magazines? That support these interests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Focus. Um, this last one is a big deal, but what came up in the interviews, especially, and we see this at other libraries mm -hmm. with Russell, is that there's a real need for people to get skills in budgeting, money management, all kinds of things. Yeah. That's a that's a, a, a tough nut to crack to figure out how the library can uh, work on skills building. Yeah that's needed in town. So I think rather than saying we're going to do it, the goal is in investigate the feasibility. How are other people doing this? How do we identify people? How do we get them there? How do we respect privacy and pride yeah. in doing that? But there's a sense that it's needed. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But I'm going to bore you with that. I hate to say it. The current educational system, because you don't want to duplicate anything that's absolutely. Well, trust me, they're not teaching that. Do you in the library literature? Yeah. I don't know call it though. I wouldn't say this to a person who's already an adult and doesn't have the skills. Adulting skills. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. And they're not taught at school. Mm -hmm. They used to be men. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking as a stepping off point to find out who might be interested in that sort of thing besides the welfare director. Um, there's a lot of people in town who don't realize that they're eligible for um, tax exemptions or reductions. You know, so Pro property senior tax. property tax, yeah. uh, which, which everybody complains about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's like, you know, the senior discount, the disability discount, the veterans discount, and there's a state program, and, and all those kind of things. And you know, people forget that, oh, I was supposed to turn that application in by April 15th. Oh, shoot. And I'm going to stop and I'll get away up another year. So and I'm just got my tax bill. That's what this is about. No. How, how are we going to do that? Right. I, mean, I was just thinking that for what you were saying about yeah. how, do you find, how do you identify yeah. those people. Yeah. If you did some small little presentation, like you know, we work with the select board or the tax right. collector or somebody, and here's the things you can be doing to do that at the time of year when 
before applications are due. Oh. And then if not, and then if you have something like that lined up, that'd be the perfect place to advertise it and say, here's you know what would be great is if we had a way to group text people to be like, here, sign up here and we'll send you a text before the time comes. Yeah. So that you're you're getting a reminder that's yeah. specific to you that it's time to submit that application. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the people that really need that okay. don't have a cell phone with yeah. text yeah. messaging yeah. capability. I mean, we're talking about... <laughs> well, I mean, they would be opting in. Could we include that in the biannual newsletter, perhaps, that goes out to people's physical addresses? I think we need to, to um, need to keep moving through this. We need yeah, to yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, but what's really great about your comment is that we need to spend some time focusing just on this. What communication do people need? How do we make it timely? What are the barriers? What are the possibilities for the library to? That's a whole yeah. uh, yeah. brainstorming yeah. section in and of itself. And then we have to decide what's the role for the library, what do we have the bandwidth to do. But those are great suggestions. Okay, so getting back to programming. So that's adults. Um, in the survey, and we can decide how much credence to give it, there was a considerable interest in opportunities for people to gather social, which is an overlap with the record. I, I recognize that. Um, and it also, touches another hot topic, which is Cake Day, which is what the library does do right now as a social gathering. It's very important to the people who come. She said Cake Day. Cake Day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so one thing that we don't want, we need to talk about outside the context of this meeting is how do we do that and how do we align that and that this overlaps with another priority, which is optimizing operating hours. Should these things be happening when the library isn't staffed with book circle and circulation? And, and perhaps, you know, a responsible volunteer. Yes. Well, I don't know that's the yes. but, but the idea is people have expressed interest and libraries do play the role of being a place where neighbors can gather mm -hmm. and hang out with them. Um, Another idea that came up at the last Vogel meeting was potluck dinners on international themes. And if the library trustees and Vogel were to collaborate around that, we might start with a three-year goal. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. So these were just ideas. Because, and then finally, you see, reach out to the rec committee to assess interest in collaborating around the subject and to respecting their mission. They might say no, but we have to. We have to ask. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, this gets into uh, the humanities field program. Three, at least three, which I think is regional education cultural events. So they only fund two. Right. Um, I got a third. Okay. Third for this year. Rick is committed to doing an astronomy night to reintroduce people to telescope using his power point and our new projector. And then bringing it out to the field with some of his telescopes and, and showing people, you know, pointing at the stars. So we're hoping to do that in October. Okay. So that would be the third for this year. Yeah. So, you see what I'm modeling? You have to do your spouses and see. You know what? You know what? You should have them bring the scope, the telescope to the garlic fest. Yes. To advertise for okay. that. Okay. Let me let me. Write so you should have they get. Bring the telescope or two or three. Okay. Just to uh -huh. I want to move to this. This is all non controversial, and you're seeing how this works, and we can add things, take things away, but the point is we need to track this and track it at trustee meetings. Increase collaboration. So, how are we going to do that? I think once we have the plan, we share it with the directors you've spoken to, and I think it's incumbent on Kate or Kate plus the trustee to have follow up conversations. And what do you see as opportunities to collaborate? Oh, my oh, look. It's a good look. I know. <laughs> so you have um, tattoo sleeves? Yeah. I'll have everyone sign it after. <laughs> oh, my God. Did, you, did they give you a question, though? Yeah. 
But tablet form. And you know, I think it was about going to 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 meet with the chairs of the direct committee, the LDS, and the select board, share the plan, and say where are the opportunities to collaborate and you know, refine based on those conversations. And then I added this point that there are collaborative efforts mentioned throughout this implementation plan. Just quickly, um, this is how it looks. It's got uh, timing in color for what where each task might go, but we're focusing over here. So, uh, increased engagement of volunteers. George has already researched and announced what you found out about. Well, I found out we can indeed have volunteers. They can do everything except the checking in and checking out function because that exposes private information, most information. But we can have any volunteers for our programs. We, I was cautioned about, about taking care of who you appoint, how you appoint them, the agreements, the training, the oversight, whether or not they need security clearance, that's when you're going to have children around. Mm -hmm. If you need a core check. Say that? If you need a core check. Say that. Yeah. Right. But we, we are free to do that. What we were not, and somehow this got confused, what we are allowed to do is ask the paid staff do what they do for money as volunteers. Right. That would be it. But if, I'm just throwing this up, if Amy wanted to be the person who opens the library and brings her knitting with her, mm -hmm. uh, and no is the, the person who oversees the textile club, that'd be all right, because no it's problem. not what she's paid to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. We can't ask her, would you work two or more hours in circulation? Or if you want to have some yeah. event here, we'd sure like you to be able to check it and out these folks so they can't pay you. No, exactly. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. yeah, got it, got it. Okay, so I love this. This has got a done in the when it will happen column because you already did it. Yeah. That's is that what that is? Yes. <laughs> based on best practices and based on my experience running volunteer programs, which I've done from friendly visiting programs and other kinds of programs that involve us. So we um, will have policies and procedures done by the end of the first half of next year. Um, and then what we need most definitely now is job descriptions. When people volunteer, what are they volunteering to do and what's the backup? Like I am, so let's say I'm the one who's ultimately responsible for opening the library for the club and being there and making sure it's closed and I'm sick. And it's clean. And what's the plan? Because volunteers shouldn't feel like, you know, it's all on them mm -hmm. to provide coverage when they can't come. So we've got to work all that out and work that out. All right. So this is the big one. Can't get to the elephant in the room with 20 minutes to follow. So how are we going to deal with the facility issues? Um, which have been you know, front and center for several years. We can't resolve those issues as part of this plan, but we can say, how are we going to re-engage this issue as a community? And these are just my thoughts, which I'm sharing with you. So now, and this gets to George's point. Once we've gotten this plan, we get to know what we want to do. So how do the facilities we have facilitate our vision and mission, and what are the deficits? So the first thing is, is, instead of saying, we have a new building, we can do all this program, and we say, this is the program we want to do, how do the facilities we have work for that? So we do a grid of that, review and update the facility needs assessment, a lot of work that went into this by Google over the last several years. So we're gonna draw on all those materials, review them, update them, and get this conversation back in a 
in a rational space where everyone's pulling together around what we plan to do. Review the alternatives. Um, you know, that for alignment with our plans, what did I say? Okay, so the first is sort of uh, going over ground we've already gone over, but in light of the plan. The second is to develop a stage plan for addressing the facility needs. And again, it does seem like reinventing the wheel, but I don't see any way around starting over and moving through the process, getting where we are. Is he okay with that? Yeah. I'm looking at you because I know how much work you've already put into this. this but I'm, I'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know, one thing that would be helpful that wasn't in the materials that I reviewed, I've already done a review of what's happened so far and a summary of it, but it just seemed like too early to introduce that. But what seemed to be missing was a good enough analysis of of operating costs associated with different options. So I think we can bring that to the fore. Um, so you can read, I won't read these two there. It's, what do you think of this plan? And I'm laying it out so that we will be done with this by the end of the coming year. And have a plan. No, 22. 22. And you know, maybe that's too long a time frame. I don't know. But that's good. So, from my point of view, we're going to talk about a program we would like. We're going to talk about how it gets implemented. And then we're going to run, I presume, we're going to run into barriers. Oh, we can't because there's nowhere to meet. Or there's not adequate to see. I'm using as an example in my head a fabric or whatever that. The yeah. textile. The textile. In this room, with who knows how many people, all talking at the same time, how does anybody hear? Oh, it's a nightmare. I've done it. So to me, this is an option of a place to meet, but it's not very good, mm -hmm. for example. And we didn't get to the East Grafton Church, but I think maybe we should try that and just see what it's like. Well, in any case, these are questions that need to be asked and answered, not slid over. Or, or, early, early on, before we start worrying about any other building. Right. Well, it, well, you see, I have in here execute a, a no-cost short-term solution to facility needs because, like, what can we do now? In the meantime, right. and but and then what is our long-term <coughs> plan as we get more utilization? As we show there's interest for the library to do more. What's our long-term? It, it would seem to me if we had events that people liked and they might have them more often. And the answer is there's nowhere to have this place. Then the community could catch on to why we need something else. Or something different. I mean, I think Not just if we decide we want it. Right. So I, I mean I can speak from it's hard for the community to see how much work goes into setting up some of our events outside. Yeah, truly. Truly. It's really hard because it's you know there's four or five of us doing it. And it can take us hours. Yeah. And somebody so else is doing it. Right. And somebody else is doing it. So they just show up and they ask for their garlic soup and they want to buy their garlic and they're good. And they're good. But, <laughs> See ya. yeah, exactly. And so even in this space, it's hard because we have to tote everything in here, which is a complaint that the recommend had too, right? About their space was that they had to cart everything over there. Right. Um, so, so that's it. To me, it's a town-wide problem. It's a hard thing for people to grab. That's the way it should be addressed. It's a town-wide problem. No, yeah. it's how it's never addressed. Well, so the, the that's what this, this is about. So, because I've well, heard references. That is an issue. Right. I've heard references to what this library need. You're talking about a community center. You're talking, you know, when we're talking about building, or it's a town-wide need, is it a library need? I don't care what we call it. We have the best interests of the town in mind. Yeah, if the town needs, you know, better space for the library, but also an indoor community center. I mean, we have a new snack shack, but what about the winter? You know, and, yeah. and how does that accommodate what we want to do? So I don't know what the exploration, who would we explore interest is? Are we talking about, I mean, we're talking long term, a combined library community center? Maybe. I don't care what we call it. Maybe, but we do need the select board to yes. be a major player. Yes. Well, the town has to be a major player. Absolutely. Absolutely. In theory, representing the town. 
Well, I mean, it is kind of what you said. You have to kind of look at where the interest is, what kind of support we get from the town, and determine how far along in each of these uh, areas do we actually go. Correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You yes. just start out with uh, your meet and greet down at the uh, library or potluck here in the, the uh, building we're in now, or then you keep on moving from there to see how much feedback and how much uh, uh, involvement you had before, and then go from there. Correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the government's saying that. Exactly. And that's going to be a town. I think we need um, broad participation. I mean, it says trustees, trustees, trustees. But mm -hmm. we need participation yeah. from other groups. It can't just be a library. I think that this I, 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 I wasn't. I was reading this as you guys were going to be just the kind of orchestrators. Yes, not the exactly. not the decision makers. Absolutely. No, correct. Okay, so so I guess what I'm putting out there is I think we need a process to revisit facility needs in light of our mission and vision for the library and the input from entities across the town. Not what the town's needs are. And that that would take another year. So at some level, to me, I would say, let me pause on that question. We, we haven't even started anything programized. So is it a little premature to start launching off into of the more space if you haven't been able or have yet demonstrated Exactly. Well, the, that, that's what this this well, first that's what this first objective is about. I'm sorry. The first, you know, what are our requirements to implement our plan? Yes. Right. So, they, so these might be further out. It might be. Yeah. I sort of think they are. But I mean, I think that <clears throat> like this first one, for example. Did I do that, or did you do that? What? I did that. I'm moving. Okay. <laughs> Um, this first one, we, need, we do need to start soon and add to it as we go. Oh, yeah. You know, because we already know the bathroom is a problem. The bathroom is a problem. By the way, Dan is a bathroom. They have an incinerator toilet. They don't have parking, but they do have No, they have like one parking space. Yeah, they got across the road. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they've got to cross a much more dangerous road. They don't really need one of those little, like, person walking signs. They do. They do. But technically, the librarian said that it's technically not legal in the town, which is, uh, I have no idea. She said it's technically never supposed to be there, but we need it there. Yeah. 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 I think the main point that getting too modern in how this would play out is that we need to restart a process, an inclusive process, yeah. about thinking about facility needs with the lens of the library's plan in mind and the needs of the entire resources of the entire town in mind. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not sure I have that laid out correctly, but we're not going to resolve that within the confidence of this plan. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, this is an easy one because now you have to do anything. I just put the, I just, <laughs> very little. Um, there is money out there for programming. Kate okay, successfully got the ARPA money, which, which was terrific, the resources that we needed. Yes, and I'm willing to work with Kate to identify other grants, because we need to pull money in from outside the town to help implement these programming goals. Um, so I set a goal of at least 5000 per year. I mean, that Donnelly Fund is up to 25000 a year, and they do programming. I know, but I wanted to set the bar. Mm -hmm. Just I love exceeding goals. Would that be funds in lieu of tax funds? Oh. If that, if we had a no, it's no, 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 Resources or whatever. You cannot supplant. Supplant is the word. We will not give you a grant to supplant operating expenses. Right. So, 
Yeah, yeah, you should have. <laughs> well, I thought that. I guess so. think that's controversial. Uh, optimizing the operating hours. This is really challenging. And this, this came up at the last trustee meeting, but I think it's a it's something that George as trustee chair is really interested in. How do we make the best use of our building? How do we resolve some of the conflicts between group activity and quiet use of the library with the resources we have? I'm I'm a full believer if we do not demonstrate that we fully utilize what we've got and can't do more without some change. Then what are we asking for? I don't know. I mean, we have to prove it in some way. We might know it intuitively we might know it. But we already know it. two activities at the same time are almost impossible in that moment. And the, and the one thing that everyone agrees on is that there needs to be a toilet. And there's like something that works better. And even if a new library is built down in that field, the town is going to still own that building. It's still going to have to get used for something. That you know, it would be easy enough to move town clerk tax club over there, or selections office, or something. But again, those facilities are going to be needed. They, they're needed now. They were needed a decade ago. They but whatever we use it for, we need a toilet. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so, so you see how this works. Um, how does the group propose we move from this draft to something we can approve next month, knowing that this will constantly be updated, improved, amended? But we need a roadmap. And Kate needs a roadmap. <laughs> and something to track. Well, the first season here. We need to know what we're about. I mean, I think the content is good. I think it really it comes down to timing. Yeah. There's time issues, right? Yeah. Yeah. Time and resources. There's only a limited number. Yeah. Right. Well, and I think based on the input from this meeting, I can tweak how we articulate these things and well, add a few things. I think open, opening up the, the idea that volunteers are allowed to one things in the building mm -hmm. really does open up a lot of possibilities. It, it opens a huge amount. amount. I'm following the model of book club. Yep. Right. Off hours, they have refreshments, they don't leave a mess for the maid coming up. And the maid in our budget? The maid in our budget. It is a volunteer thing, isn't it? <laughs> so I think yeah, I mean, I think that, that that's a huge thing that we need to it do. Is. It, it, is. Is. it does. Because with that, you know, I can sign out keys, I can ensure that the space is returned to an appropriate way. Right. We can, we can, you know, put out descriptions of the programs running at different times. And that's right. Yeah. Who even, who's the leader? Right? Yeah. Or whatever. Coordinator. Yeah. Right. All that's useful uh, advertising. Mm -hmm. So here's what I propose. We're on to next steps because it is 11.52. So my take from this meeting, uh, first of all, review. We approved a new mission statement. We approved a new mission statement. We um, didn't vote on the value statements, but we like them as written with one tweak and with the addition of something about communications, which I draft and circulate between meetings, so we're punting on approving that to the next meeting. Strategic priorities, we have not voted upon. Now I'm stopping a minute. Do we want to vote to accept these strategic priorities now that we've seen how they play out in the implementation plan? Is there anything missing? You might be swimming out of the back and forth while we right now? Yeah, I, I, I'm <laughs> sensing that we're at a guest. But <laughs> yeah, I'm at a guest. Okay, I'll tell you what My question was, this was something that we didn't vote on, these strategic, on accepting these strategic priorities. Yeah. We can come back to the next meeting on where we're punting too much. I think, it might, I think it might be useful to give people time to map these mm -hmm. to yes. that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay, so we're punting on that. All right, so that's where we're at. But again, I pat this all on the back for the mission and vision. 
and that is what we need. So that's really quite uncomfortable. All right, so what I would do uh, is circulate the final value statement and some suggestions. We will go back and forth and uh, come to, to some consensus between meetings, but not make a decision on that until the following public session, at which time we will approve the value statement. I will tweak this with the input from this meeting, circulate it uh, with the minutes and with these other proposed changes. Um, and this time, I really want all, everyone to get back to me with feedback because we're finishing this on September 25th. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be shot. <laughs> so, yes, Emma. It's really hard for me to. Oh, it's, it's very see. hard. I'm, I'm sorry, but you, you'll be able to pump it up on your screen. Yes, yeah, so, so we'll get input on that. I don't think we need to get too hung up on every detail of the implementation plan because that's going to be relatively fluid. Mm -hmm. But let's get it as good as we can before our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go over everything at the next meeting. I'll bring refreshments. Mm -hmm. And oh, right. I'm hoping, giving input from this meeting, that we can with relative ease move through to approval of the plan. And those are the next steps. Anything else? People would like to raise before we adjourn. I have an else when you're done. A pardon? I have an else when you're done. When you're done, I have one more. I'm done. So we heard at the trustee meeting that there should be a uh, email address that we dump stuff in, copies of our messages. Oh so yes. On. And you were going to set that up, Kate, is that right? I, I was going to talk with Sue about it because there might already be a system in place that she is. Okay. I think this well, is We need point. to know, and if you could advertise that, because it seems like we should start putting stuff in there. Well, there has been very little exchange between meetings other than our next meeting as plus agenda up till now. But if we're expecting to have some exchange about this between now and the next meeting, it would be great. Daddy Park in that, that yes. email address. That is the copy exists. Right. Okay, I agree. Right. So I will connect with the document before I send out this email. And that would apply to the minutes, um, Andrew, the minutes from the meeting to go there as a copy. Or a lot of discussion. Including bids on the roof. Well, yeah, I was saying that <clears throat> to just always CC that email address when we're just yeah. mm -hmm. It's so easy. Yeah, we just set up a few folders and send one up to keep the yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. That's so oh, easy. Oh, yeah. Easy to do the right thing. <laughs> okay, so George isn't going to handle the email. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can handle the email. I don't want to do the folders. <laughs> I don't either. I think it's it's a parking place for all right. things. Somebody wants to do archival research. Today. Absolutely. Right. So thank you, Kate. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, adjourn the meeting at 11:57. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have an unscribbled-on copy of no. draft mission and values and intended impact? No. Oh, okay.